I'm just going to squeeze a wriggly worm down here, down the glass. And I don't mind if I have to scrape excess off. I'd rather scrape excess off than to have bubbles, air bubbles and all of that sort of thing. So I'm going to paint that space that is my pattern piece. Now I did this the other day and I missed the points on my um, gorgeous phoenix and that was because I hadn't um, painted on both sides so some of them I really quite missed the points um, and wasn't really happy with it. Not that it mattered much at the end of the day and I'm going to need a little bit more I think a little bit more on this side. So let me just get that gun and give myself a little, another little baby garden worm. Because I'm quite happy for it to goo out all on the side because I'll cut it off. Once it's cured. And now I can squish it down. I'll put an extra little dab here, extra little dab here and around there. Because I really don't want to do a well bond wash. So pop it where you need it to be. And then just start to wriggle it about to squish out any air bubbles that you might have. And we'll be able to see this when we take the backer off, which might be actually too late. I might take the backer off now because it's fairly safe and secure. So we can see it oozing out down here. Let me see if I can get you closer. So you can see the oozing. See it oozing? That's okay because I'll be able to remove that with a razor blade, which I can't quite put my hands on right now, but let's have a look at one of these. I'll use this, this little tool here. Where are we? Here we go. This one here. And I can just scrape that off if I'm at all concerned about it. But also remember that as glue dries, it does shrink a little. So you don't want to over clean at this stage. So focusing on the points, focusing on the points and giving it a good squish. Well, that edge is perfectly lined up now. Fantastic. We have all the tiles already um, tumbled, cut, etc. So now it's how do we put these little slivers on because I've been raving about how much easier it is. Important things to note. Text check side up, flat side down. Otherwise you're going to have trouble with the glue. You'll definitely get gaps and holes if the underneath side is textured. So think textured side up. So let's have a look at how simple it is. I've had a little play and I've roughly got what will, will sort of fit. We'll see how we go. I'm going to do the same technique again, is do the painting, paint it on the inside of the, where the, um, in between the, what is the grout lines. Okay, so I'm going to start at the skinniest part of this and put my um, little tiles on. I've got a nice pointy bit here that was really lucky to get that one, which I'm going to put right near the hole for the sun catcher. And you press it with a little bit of a wriggle in place to the shape you want. You can see that's starting to um, take shape. I've also used a mix of uh, reds. I think just a single colour would make it look a little bit flat. Because I haven't finished designing this, so I'm not really 100% sure about what it's going to look like. So here I am, just putting these tests on in between these grout lines. So reasonably close. And they just seem to sort of fit together close. So you don't have to worry too much, but making sure that we've got a reasonable shape for our grout line. So you may want to just pop in what you need for your lovely grout line and then uh, add in the middle so it's like colouring in. See how 
quickly it comes together. And the last time I did a, um, a pattern, um, I put everything out, I laid it all out, I was very conscientious. And then as I put it together, it actually took up much less space. So I had to uh, tip out all my lovely little bits of Tess and find stuff that would uh, fit in, fit in nicely. Need to press it down to make sure um, there's no uh, air bubbles and that the bottom is completely covered, which it should be, as um, we've made it nice and thick. See, I'm just keeping this line nice and straight here. And tomorrow when it's dry, then I'll get rid of that excess that's squished out. I won't do it now because I don't want to pull it out from underneath the tiles. Just if you need a little and bit of a prod because your hands are a bit bit dodgy I like I like this pointy tool as a, a prodder and a poker but there are tweezers uh, you can use this type of tool to prod it about um, tweezers or one of these whatever it is a toothpick even so really anything that is uh, that you can move around it's a little bit there I might just take that out while I'm there and then away we now go again. I need uh, a shape that looks a bit like that. So we can hunt our pieces out. I think this might be it. Pop it in there. Perfect fit. Oh my goodness me. Now to clean up your tacky brush here. You can see I've got glue all over it. I get a little bit of a paper wipe here. Fold it in half. And then squeeze as much glue out of that end of the brush as I can. So I'm just really squeezing it out and just again a little rubby dub. Then get the then get the t the turps which I just pop into one of these things and just poke it around. Jiggle it up and down. Most of it's out. Just give it a gentle wipe. Get another little towel to dry it off. So one to get the excess. I don't know who says this uh, mineral turps is low smell because it's really quite horrid. Rub that off. Can't do it with my left hand. I shall go back to right hand. Hopefully you can see it all right. And squeeze it nice and firmly so it sucks up all the moisture there. And then in half an hour I'm ready to go again. How easy is that? 